Hello ladies. Welcome to the first in this video series entitled Eve Online in 3D. Let's get started. First things first, I'm going to assume that you have some rudimentary knowledge in Photoshop or the photo editing program of your choice, as well as you already know the basics of Cinema 4D or again the 3D program of your choice. Uh, this series is specifically going to focus on getting EVE Online assets into uh, a 3D program, Cinema 4D, and how to make the most out of that. So, we're going to open up Try Exporter. If it's your first time opening up Try Exporter, it's going to ask you to specify your EVE Online installation path. Can't really help you out with that if you don't know where you've installed it, you're on your own already. So find that set that and you'll see a res folder like I have here. We'll expand that and we're going to go into DX9 model. From model we'll go into ship because this is where all the ships are and we will go into Minmatar. Now we're going to use my personal favorite the Rifter which happens to be MF4. So if you want to see it double click the mod 3 shape GR2 file and lo and behold there's our lovely Rifter. So what we'll do from there is we'll click File, making sure that the GR2 is highlighted. We'll say Export Try Model. Now I've created a folder on my desktop here that you can see called Lesson 101. So I'm going to save it in there as an OBJ file, uh, simply because OBJ is pretty well supported across 3D programs. And I'm just going to call it Rifter. That was that. That's how easy it is. Next thing we're going to do is select the DDS file, text D and we'll say file, uh, extract file directory, choose my lesson 101 folder, and now we have that. And I'll do the same for NGS, DDS, extract file, lesson 101, and believe it or not, that's it. We are done inside of Try Exporter. That was easy. I'm gonna open up Photoshop, and I will start by opening within my Lesson 101 folder, the text-d file. You can see that actually looks like the texture of the uh, Rifter, which is fantastic. And when I load it up, I'm just going to uh, disable load maps, say OK. And from there, I get the high-res version of my texture. Now, an interesting thing is that this is not oriented properly once I get it into Cinema 4D. So what I do, since I work on 3D ships often, is I've created an action called Eve Images, which essentially, as you can see here, it rotates the document 180 degrees, then flips it horizontally. That's the first thing I do every time I bring a texture in. That's really it for the first part. So I'm going to do a Save As into Lesson 101. And I'm going to save as a JPEG, and I'm simply going to call this Texture. Okay, take a look at the settings, that's what I leave them at. Away we go, and we now have a texture for our Rifter. What's interesting though is if I go into the Channels tab, there's all kinds of different channels for this. You'll notice right away that if I click on the Alpha tab, that the Alpha was not actually showing. Now it is, so what I'll do is I will select all of that, copy it to my clipboard, create a new file of the same dimensions, but before I hit paste, I'm going to go away from channels and back to layers. Then I will paste it in. Save as. We'll make it a JPEG. And I'm actually going to call this LUM Alpha, which stands for Luminance and Alpha, because I can use this in two different channels on the Rifter. Okay. Save the defaults, life is good. Back to our original in the channels tab. You can click on each one, see what they do. It's kind of interesting. But you know, there's really nothing else here that I want to use at this point in time, so let's just close that. So I'll open up the other file, which was my NGS file. Okay. Click OK. And the first thing I'm going to do is same as always, apply my action to get it oriented the same way, fantastic. When I go into my channels individually this time I can see that there's a lot more variation between channels. Okay, 
I'm going to select the blue channel. I'm going to select all, copy, make a new document, go into my layers tab, paste, and I'm going to save this as a JPEG, and I'm going to call it spec bump, which really stands for specular and bump, because again, I like to use it in two different channels. So I'll save that, hit OK, done in there. Go back to my channels on the original image. And you can look around and see interesting things, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose the green channel. And I will say, select all, copy, new file again. And I'm going to save this one. Oops, I made a mistake. I copied it into the channels tab. Didn't want to do that. On that one, it doesn't really make too much of a difference, but always make sure you do it in the layers tab. Uh, good, good habit to get into. I will do a save as JPEG. And I'm going to actually call this one displace, as it will be used as a displacement map. OK. Close that. Go back to my channels, select RGB. Now this one is something that uh, I'll debate with myself, and you'll get to listen in a future tutorial, the next one actually. Uh, so I'll save it for now. So select all, copy. Actually, I don't even need to. I can just do it from here. Save as JPEG. And I'm going to call this normal. Uh, it can be used as a normal map, which, like I said, we'll get into next tutorial. OK, that's it. We are now done in Photoshop. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward so far. We uh, got all our assets out of EVE very quickly. We've managed to make sure that our textures are going to be applied properly. And we've also saved out textures for each of the channels we're going to use. So I will close Photoshop. From there, I will open Cinema 4D. This is just a default scene, nothing fancy. File, Merge Objects. I will choose my Rifter OBJ, say Open. Scale of 1 is fine. So let's zoom in, take a look at our Rifter. Right There it is. I'm going to rename it Rifter, just because it's good to keep track of. And for those of you wondering, no, I do not have really heavy fingers. I just have a really loud keyboard and a really good microphone that noise you're hearing in the background is actually my computer fan which is as far away as I could possibly get it. Anyway, if you're wondering what I'm doing right now, I am showing the four different texture areas that belong to the rifter. Okay, you can see the pink, strong pink area is your main hull texture. Your salmon-y kind of color is your engine area. The green is actually your glass. You can see that in there. Uh, let's see, does it have any other bearing on anything? You know, it actually doesn't. So let's just leave that separated for now. And then your blue is your little transparent bits that appear on the Rifter. Uh, it's one of the reasons I chose the Rifter. The first, of course, is it's my favorite ship, being a diehard Minmatar. So I always enjoy doing images with it. So the two we've agreed that go together are the pink and the salmon. So let's merge those into a single texture. And I'm going to open this up. First thing I'll do is just put the colors back to where they were uh, once I remember that my numlock is off. Okay. And under the color channel, I'm going to bring in the texture JPEG that we created. So right away, if I just give a quick preview render here, you can see that we have a well-mapped texture on our rifter. Pretty cool, I know. So what we're going to do then is go down to our specular, and we're going to increase the height to 100%. You can see that gives really nice shininess. And again, if we do a quick little preview render, you can see that there's nicer shine. Um, but it really kind of is washing things out. So what I'm going to do is go into the specular color channel, and I'm going to grab our spec bum map. Okay. So what that does, being a grayscale image, is it's it's going to apply light to the brighter areas and less light to the darker areas, well, less specularity. 
So if I do my preview render again, you'll see that there's, uh, it looks a little bit more like what you would expect. There's shininess in some areas, but not in others, but it overall has a slightly more metallic feel to it, which is what we were going for. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is try and give a little bit of depth. Now, there's, oh goody. Eh. Let's just close that for now. That was interesting, never had that pop up. And I'm too lazy to record this all over again. So, moving on. There are three different ways to enhance the level of detail on the ship. There's your bump channel, your normal channel, and your displacement channel. I'll talk about those more in the next tutorial. So for now, we're just gonna load up the bump channel, and we're gonna load our, our spec bump again. Right, already in the preview you can see that it's now going to have a lot more interesting dynamic range in what we're doing. Okay, It's actually pretty strong, so I'm going to knock that down to 10%. Let's take a look at that. A lot of it's personal preference, and that's one of the beauties of art. You can really just do whatever you want to do. Okay, I'm okay with that. Excellent. Um, Last thing we're going to do is luminance. Luminance is interesting. Luminance is how lit something is. You can see when I turned it on, I now have a completely white, bright texture. It's independent of lighting. I don't really want that. I want to define the area where my luminance is going to appear, and of course, for that, I use my Lume Alpha map. Okay? Now I'm going to jack this brightness up to 600% just to make these things really bright, and when I do a render, you may see them, you may not, but there are all these bright little lights here, which is pretty fantastic, except for the fact that I'd like them to be orange. Uh, so how am I going to do that? Well, with the texture in place, I'm going to choose Filter. Then when I go into the texture, I now have the ability to apply a filter within my 3D program to the basic map that I made. So I'm going to hit Colorize. I'm going to move saturation all the way up, and you can already see it's got a nice red to it. If I render that now, you know what? Let's just stick with that, because that looks pretty badass, and yeah, I like that. So that's really all I'm going to do with this texture today. So moving on, uh, we'll move on to the glass. Now, I've never actually separated them before, so, so this is interesting for me. I thought, you know, hey, we're here. Let's try something a little different together. So again, what I can do there is uh, I could choose a color channel, etc., etc. But let's experiment for a minute, because experimenting is a lot of fun. Transparency, I'm going to knock that up to 1.4, because that'll give it a really nice uh, Fresnel. And if I take a quick render, you can see I've already got this nice clear glass. If I want to change the color of it, uh, what would be a nice color for that? If I change it to the same type of red, transparency, oh, take the reflection off, what does that give us? Eh, it still gives us clear. Alright, so that didn't work out too well. So, instead of doing that, I'm going to do what I always do and merge it with our main texture. So now what I've done, you'll see when I render that, I have screwed up everything because I did it backwards. Ha 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 ha. So let's do a quick undo, and let's actually do that the other way, like I should have, and do a render. And there you go. That's probably what you're more familiar to uh, seeing. If we zoom out, give it a render. That looks more like the rifter we know and love. Okay, so all I did was combine the maps, and it's using the same attributes as the main texture. Okay. So, moving on to our little transparent bits. I could just put this over here, uh, but I don't really want to do that. Now, I am lazy, so I don't really feel like going through all of it again. So I'm just going to cheat. And what I did there was I essentially copied the texture and then replaced the little tips one. I'm going to turn off the luminance, because uh, there's really no luminance on those little shiny bits. And I'm actually even going to turn off the bump for now. Now what you'll notice, especially if I zoom in a bit, is that you're not seeing the transparency you would hope to be seeing. So I'm going to go down to my alpha channel, 
and I'm going to load my luminous alpha. Now when I load that in and I do my render, you can see that all my little bits are now showing the way that they should be. So if I zoom out, give a render of my ship, there you go. Now you have your little transparent bits. Funny thing is, is that's really it for the introductory tutorial. Uh, we've just stuck with default lighting. We've brought our textures into Photoshop and played with them a little bit, not too much. Applied some things within Cinema 4D, so let's just set something up for a nice render so we can see how this looks. 1680 by 1050, sure. We'll change our anti-aliasing to best, and I actually prefer the Mitchell filter. And let's save that out. We will save that to Lesson 101, so why not call it Lesson 101. TIFF file is fine and dandy. Excellent. Let's give that a go. Much better with the uh, anti-aliasing in place. I just like to work in geometry mode uh, as it renders things a lot quicker. So there you go. There's our basic rifter. We've pulled it out of EVE Online via Tri Exporter, messed around with it in Cinema 4D, and sorry, in Photoshop, and then brought it into Cinema 4D and reapplied it to try to give it a feel that, that we like. As I mentioned, uh, being artistic is all about your own personal flair on things, so feel free to play with it, do what you want, but that's the basics right then and there. Thanks as always for your support. Hope you enjoyed the video. Fly safe. Thank you.